Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Just a Tip with me, Rogue FTV. You guys asked for a video on how to set up GPS in Betaflight 4.5, and here it is. I've done a video in the past covering my 4.2, 4.3 GPS settings, which I recommend watching. It's less than five minutes long and filled with a ton of good info. So I'll put a card up on screen here and a link in the video description down below so you guys can check it out. But in Betaflight 4.5, GPS functionality is even better. So let's jump right in and set up some GPS. This is my 7-inch that I'll be using for this tutorial. But stick around to the end of the video where I'll list all the settings I use on my 4-inch, 5-inch, and 7-inch crafts. Let's plug into Betaflight and get started. This is a fresh flash of 4.5 on the flight controller. And at this point, all the settings are default. The first thing I do is in the Ports tab. This is where you tell Betaflight what UART you connected your GPS's TX and RX wires to. In my case, I've connected my GPS to UART 5, but your port may be different depending on where you connected your GPS unit. Once you've identified the correct UART, all you have to do is select GPS from the sensor input pull-down menu. Set the baud rate to 115,200. Some people have reported issues with Autobaud setting the value too low for reliable GPS functionality. Check with the manufacturer specs for the GPS that you have, but usually baud rates of 57,600 and 115,200 work. You want to use the fastest baud rate that you can so that the GPS can communicate with the flight controller and update as fast as possible. Click Save and Reboot, and let's move on to the Configuration tab where we will enable the GPS features in Betaflight. Take notice, I have my accelerometer enabled, and you'll want to make sure that yours is also enabled. When the quad flies back under GPS Rescue, Betaflight will automatically initiate angle mode for the return flight. You do not need to manually set up angle mode in the Modes tab, but you do need the accelerometer enabled for GPS Rescue, even if you only fly in acro mode. If your flight controller has a barometer and you want to use it, you can enable the barometer here by clicking the radio button. If you use a barometer, stick a piece of foam over the barometer and shield it from direct wind. You'll get much more reliable and accurate readings. Betaflight does not use the magnetometer, so don't worry about enabling it, even if your GPS has a magnetic compass. Scroll down to the Other Features section and click the radio button to enable GPS. Click Save and Reboot again to lock in the change. Now let's head over to the GPS tab. Depending on your GPS module, you will select the protocol UBlocks or NMEA in the protocol dropdown. In my experience, most GPS modules use UBlock. Select and enable Auto Config, use Galileo, and set home point once. This will set the return to home point on the first arming location of each pack. If you have a crash with GPS enabled or you want to land on something and disarm, you want the craft to return to the home point if you initiate GPS rescue and not to return to the last place it was rearmed from. I always set ground assistance type to North America because that's where I am, although I really don't know what ground assistance does. Again, click Save and Reboot to lock in the changes. When your flight controller restarts, you should now see the GPS sensor light up in the row of sensors at the top of Betaflight, provided that your GPS module is getting power. If your quad is close to a window, you should start to see some satellites acquire in the GPS tab. Here's another rogues tip. I always connect my GPS modules to 3.3 volt pads. I've had issues in the past with GPS modules not working reliably on 5 volt pads even though they were rated for 5 volts. 3.3 volt pads have never given me an issue in all my years of flying. If you do not see the GPS sensor illuminated, check the following in this order. Is your GPS getting power over the 5 volt rail or the 3.3 volt rail? You may need to plug in a LiPo to power on your GPS module. Ports tab. Ensure that you've selected the correct port and set the sensor type as GPS. Baud rate. If you are having some issues where the GPS sensor will not light up, but you are getting some sats or you're experiencing dropouts, disable auto baud in the ports tab and manually set the baud rate as per the highest baud rate the manufacturer of your GPS module recommends. GPS protocol. If you have uBlock selected and you know all the other settings are correct, try the NMEA protocol. 
All manufacturers clearly state the working protocol for their GPS units in their documentation. TX RX wires connected wrong? If all other settings are correct and double check, make sure that when you wired up your GPS to the flight controller that you wired the TX wire from the GPS to an RX pad on the flight controller and that your RX wire from the GPS goes to the corresponding TX pad on the flight controller. TX always connects to RX and RX always connects to TX. Assuming that your GPS is now working like mine is, let's head over to the failsafe tab to set up our failsafe procedures and return to home option. I always set the failsafe switch action to stage two for all my crafts, regardless of whether they have GPS or not. Under stage two settings, I always set the period of time in stage one failsafe after signal loss as low as possible. In Betaflight 4.5, that value is one second. For failsafe throttle low, I just keep the default value of 10 seconds. I've used this value in past versions of Betaflight and I've never had any issues related to it. In the stage two failsafe procedure, I change the default setting from drop to GPS rescue so that an RX signal loss will trigger GPS rescue. Below, this is where I configure the GPS return altitude return speed, and other GPS rescue settings. Now again, for you guys that are following along at home, this is my 7-inch quad, so some of the settings will be specific to this size craft, but I'll let you know which ones they are, and at the end of the video, I'll show you guys the settings I use on my 4-inch and 5-inch GPS quads. I set the altitude mode to max altitude. The craft will climb to the highest altitude that it was flown at during the pack, plus the initial climb altitude. This will provide plenty of clearance over obstacles while staying below the 400 foot ceiling. Initial climb meters. I set this to 100 meters or about 330 feet. Return altitude meters. This is only used for fixed altitude mode. If you want your quad to fly back at a fixed altitude, set the altitude mode to fixed and enter your return altitude in meters here. I don't use fixed, so I'll just keep the default value of 30 here. Ascend rate, meters per second. This determines how fast the quad will climb vertically until it reaches the return altitude. This setting will vary from craft to craft, but I found a value of three meters per second to work well on all of my crafts. It provides a quick and gentle ascent without going full send straight up. Return ground speed, meters per second. This setting determines how fast the quad will fly back to home when GPS rescue is initiated. Again, this setting will vary from quad to quad based on size and weight, but for my 7 inch, I've found a value of 13.5 meters per second to work well for me. It's just slower than my normal cruise speed, so as to be efficient on the batteries during my return flight. Maximum pitch angle. This is the maximum angle that the quad will pitch to while returning home. I set mine to plus 5 degrees more than my camera angle in case my quad has to fly into the wind on the return trip. Take note, this is the max angle to be used. Betaflight will use the lowest pitch angle needed to maintain your set return ground speed. Descent distance meters. As the quad returns to home, once it reaches this distance, it will begin its descent and initiate landing. I use a value of 50 meters. At about 150 feet from home, the quad will begin descending to land without overshooting the home point. Descent rate, meters per second. This controls the speed at which the quad will descend while landing. I use the value of one meter per second on all my crafts. I've found this speed to be a gentle descent that gives me enough time to get eyes and ears on the quad in case I have to recover manual control or make a line of sight landing. Throttle min, 1200. This setting will vary from craft to craft. This is the minimum throttle that can be used during GPS rescue. If your quad is really heavy, you may need to adjust the default value. On my 7 inch, I use a value of 1200. Throttle max, 1900. This setting will also vary from craft to craft, but the default value should be okay. This is the maximum throttle value that can be used during GPS rescue. If you have a small light quad, you may consider reducing this if your return speed is low. Throttle hover, 1260. This value is very important to get right. 
If it's too low, the craft will drop suddenly at the start of GPS rescue. If it's set too high, the quad will continue to climb and gain altitude during the return flight. You can check your black box logs or look at your radio's throttle PWM value as you are doing a hover to get the correct approximate value to enter. My 7 inch hovers around 1250, so I enter a value of 1260 here. Min distance to home meters 30 meters. This is the minimum distance from home that you need to be for GPS rescue to be active. If the minimum distance to home is too low and you initiate GPS rescue, you may not have an accurate heading or home direction. If you're within this distance and you initiate GPS rescue, drop will be used as the failsafe action. You must fly out past the min distance to home for GPS rescue to be active. MinSats 8. This is the minimum number of satellites you need along with a valid 3D fix to arm. You need at least 5 sats to have a reliable GPS position, and I do not recommend using a value of less than 8. The more sats you have, the better your positioning will be. Allow arming without GPS fix? Keep the default setting of no here. If you arm the quad without a 3D fix and min sats acquired, GPS rescue will not work, and the quad will not fly home because it didn't know where home was when it took off. Note, you cannot start a flight with less than minsats and establish a home point while flying if you gain additional satellites in the air. This setting is intended for bench testing only. Sanity checks. I keep them set to on. I don't use a manual failsafe switch, and I feel that this setting provides the most safety. And let's save the changes by clicking Save and Reboot. Let's click on the OSD tab. I've already set up the OSD the way I like it for my GPS quads off camera, which is my regular OSD layout along with a few additional GPS elements. The elements I use are craft name, flip over after crash arrow, home direction arrow, battery average cell voltage, GPS sats, altitude, link quality, RSSI DBM, GPS home distance, flight distance, GPS speed, disarmed, Timer 2, Battery Current Draw, and Warnings. With Canvas Mode now available to everyone, you can choose to display additional elements in your OSD if you want, like real-time GPS coordinates. I have them sent over telemetry and displayed on my radio, so I don't display them in my OSD. If you'd like to know how I did that, I did a video tutorial that I'll link in a card above here and in the description down below so you guys can click and follow right along. I use DJI with WTFOS on this quad and in my goggles, so I set my video format to HD. I use metric units, and I set up timer 2 as on arm time with second precision. I personally set all the alarms to the bare minimum values because I don't use them. In the warnings section, I've got my standard warnings enabled, and I've added GPS rescue disabled and GPS rescue unavailable. Now that we have GPS rescue as an option, it will be good to know if there are any related warnings. If you use the post-flight stats in your OSD, you can set them up here based on whatever info you're interested in seeing. This is how I have mine set up in case you're interested. In the Modes tab, I've set up GPS Rescue as a flight mode and assign an AUX switch so that I can do a manual test of GPS Rescue and add redundancy to my failsafe action procedure. When testing GPS Rescue, Find a large open area with minimal obstacles. Once MinSats has been acquired, arm the quad and fly out well past your min distance to home. Ensure that as you are flying, the home direction arrow is pointing in the correct direction to home. If it's not pointing in the correct direction, you do not have a good 3D fix and you should not attempt GPS rescue. If the home direction arrow is pointing in the correct direction to home with the nose of the quad pointed away from you, Bring the quad down to a hover one or two feet off the ground and trigger GPS rescue via your aux switch. The quad should climb to the set altitude, turn to home, and begin flying back to the home point until it reaches the set descent distance, where it will automatically descend to land. If anything goes wrong or GPS prerequisites have not been met and drop is initiated instead, the quad will only fall a foot or two during the test rather than from 100 feet up in the air. In the event of an actual RX failsafe, if all GPS prerequisites have been met, GPS rescue will take over and the quad will begin flying home. As soon as RX signal is regained, 
Any movement of the sticks will kick you out of GPS rescue and back into your original flight mode. I have made it my practice to manually flip my GPS rescue aux switch immediately after any RX failsafe, so any movement of the sticks will not affect the return flight. This is especially handy if you have questionable video at the time of your RX failsafe. Now I promised you guys if you stuck around until the end, I'd show you the specific settings I use on my 4-inch and 5-inch quads as well as my 7-inch. So here they are. Go ahead and pause the video and get screen grabs wherever you need to. Well, that will do it for this episode of Just a Tip. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found this content helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more. If you feel that I really helped you or earned your support, please feel free to buy me a coffee. Link in the description down below. I don't monetize my channel, so contributions from viewers like you really help out and go a long way. If you have any questions about anything we talked about in the video, leave a comment in the description down below. Please check out some of the other videos in my Just a Tip playlist filled with other helpful tips and tricks on how to make your FPV easier.